Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're welcome to another exciting episode of You and I. Now, let's get started by going on a commercial break. Don't go away. Most people avoid the tough jobs. We're different. We're not here to complain that things are broken. We're here to fix them. You need someone that will take the tough decisions and stand by their word. To do that, you need the best of the best. Physically, mentally. So it doesn't matter if it's creating opportunities or supporting economies. We know it's a tough job. But hey, somebody's got to do it. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. The service sector makes an important contribution to the gross domestic product in most countries, providing jobs, imputes and public services for the economy. Many services are key imputes to all or most other businesses. The service industry in Nigeria is a growing one and one of the top players to make a mark in the industry is Lonatech Nigeria Limited. Lonatech is a multi-award winning indigenous company that was established in 1991. The firm is committed to developing capacity, capability and competence across the various sectors of the economy. Their aim is to identify, develop and engage local talent while leveraging on technology to maximize productivity and profitability. Now, my guest today is the principal consultant of Lunatech Industry Limited. She is an alumni of Manchester Business School and has a PhD in Computer Aided Design and Drawing from Bradford University, UK. She is committed to developing tomorrow's leaders strategic thinkers and planners who can be groomed to make a difference. As a committed change agent, her passion is to empower the local workforce and businesses that provide services in highly technology industries such as energy, power, oil, gas, infrastructure, and so on. She is passionate about leaving a legacy of having touched the lives of at least 100,000 youths in a very significant manner. Please help me welcome Dr. Mrs. Ibilola Amao. Thank you. Wow, welcome to you and I. Thank you. First of all, before we commence this commencement, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there's something we usually do. We usually take a pledge. Wow. It's a ritual. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Let's have your hands. Don't worry. It's <laughs> safe. <laughs> now say after me. Yeah. I. I. Your name? I. I. I Ibilola Amao. Promises to say the truth. Promises to say the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Don't please your, your, your colleagues. I won't. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Amen. Amen. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> now, welcome to the show. Thank you. Wow. So you have a very interesting resume. Let us into your background a bit. Right. Um, I'm a civil and structural engineer uh, with a doctorate in computer aided design and 3D modeling. Um, I specialized in oil and gas facilities mm. and on returning to Nigeria I realized there was a huge gap between what the expatriates were doing in Nigeria and what Nigerians were doing mm. and I decided to go about closing the gap and I set up a business to do that. And that business is Lunadec? Yes. Can you tell us a bit about us? Well Lunadec is an oil and gas consulting company that prepares uh, the young professionals to actually take up opportunities in hydrocarbon-based uh, uh, companies. We are also focused on building capacity, capability and competence of locals to improve the lot of the Nigerian economy. Wow. So what prepared you for this very huge, you know, bold step you, you took, you've taken? What, what, what prepared you to, 
you know, this is a male dominated industry, obviously. So, um, my late father was a civil and structural engineer. Mm -hmm. I watched him work with a passion. I love maths and physics, and I wanted to solve problems. So, engineering. Another one solving a problem. Fantastic. So, engineering, <laughs> en engineering was the first choice for me. Okay. And um, I believe that being a tomboy growing up, I just loved. Tomboy. <laughs> yes, I just loved. I just loved doing things that uh, boys were doing, and I thought, well, if they can do it, I can do it too. So uh, I ended up becoming an engineer. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So what were your? Of course, you must have encountered challenges. So what was your main? You know, your main challengeable challenge. First and foremost, I don't think um, engineering about thirty years ago wasn't uh, dominated by women, even more so now, and. Um, I believe convincing people I was serious enough to be an engineer and a professional as well was a major for me. Hmm. You are very passionate about local content. Absolutely. Please tell us more about it. Well, I believe that um, the locals in any environment should be developed to harness their natural resources and optimize the natural resources to create wealth and jobs in the environment. Mm. And local content is about building capacity, mm -hmm. capability and competence mm. of the indigenous workforce and companies to provide quality services in any of the industries in their locality. So that's so, what local content so is as, about. So yeah, yeah, with, with your, you know, your company, Lunadec, yeah. so what opportunities has the local content you know, been able to help as regards your, your, your company? Well, first and foremost, uh, 20, 30 years ago, Primarily, most of the oil and gas projects were done outside Nigeria. And we set out to ensure that oil and gas projects were domiciled in Nigeria. So designing oil and gas facilities are no longer done offshore, they're done in Nigeria. We had to domesticate technology and develop the local workforce to be able to execute those contracts locally. So we've had an increase in that activity. And then we worked tirelessly for about 10 years. And in, in 2010, we had the Nigerian Oil and Gas Industry Content Development Act passed into law. And the Local Content Act, as it's known as, has created jobs and opportunities for Nigerians in Nigeria. the oil and gas industry how is it performing now given the situation we have in this I mean right now with the low crude oil um, um, prices well surprisingly the low crude oil prices is going to do great things for Nigeria hmm? because how rather rather than exporting crude oil and making hundred and ten dollars or hundred and twenty dollars a barrel we're now compelled to begin to look at the midstream and downstream sectors of the Nigerian oil and gas industry, which will encourage us to develop refineries, petrochemical plants, fertilizer plants, and utilize our gas to generate uninterrupted power. So it's a good thing for Nigeria. Rather than exporting crude oil, we're going to start refining and uh, developing the natural resources in country, because that's the way to create maximum value. There's a huge dirt in um, um, of, of science and technical education in, the Niger in Nigeria today. I yes. mean, a lot of young people are just getting carried away with the whole entertainment thing going on. And the science and, you know, our science and industry, mm. you know, a lot of youths are not interested in that mm. area. So what do you think can be done to encourage this? What, 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 mm. what, is it the schools, is it the fault of the school or the economy? Yeah. What exactly could be done to at least um, encourage the youth to, you know, face this side of the, you know, of this sort of business? Yes. With, I mean, in developing the yes. country. I'd say science, technology, engineering, and maths seems to be a tough one for young people. Um, I think the first thing is parents have to explain to their children that if you develop science, uh, if you develop a scientific mind, you will be in a better position to solve societal problems. And for a, an emerging economy like Nigeria that is blessed with a lot of natural resources, you need science, technology, engineering and maths to harness those resources. So rather than importing finished products from all the other nations that harness their natural resources, I think Nigerians need to embrace 
embrace science, technology, engineering, and maths so that we begin to refine our natural resources, create maximum value in country before we export finished products. So rather than exporting crude oil, for example, we should be exporting petrol, diesel, and kerosene. Rather than exporting cocoa, we should be exporting chocolates. Rather than exporting <laughs> corn or... Well, Fantastic, yeah. Rather than exporting groundnuts, we should be exporting groundnut oil rather than exporting palm oil, palm, palm oil. So these are the areas where science, technology, engineering and maths will change the orientation of Nigerians. So that rather than having a short-term, quick-fix approach to life, we will create maximum value for all our natural resources, create jobs and wealth for Nigerians in Nigeria. Fantastic. We will go on a short break, and when we come back, we'll continue this conversation. Stay tuned with us. There are certain sentences that we hear on a daily basis. We do not have the opportunities. They don't even remember us. These are the typical words of the average Nigerian youth. Today, we're going to be going into the streets, and we're going to be finding out from people what they feel, the youth exactly, what they feel about their present situations, what they are doing to assuage these situations and how they are going to be able to prevent more of this from happening. I feel Nigerian youths are really disadvantaged. Because I, I think the, the basic uh, amenities where the youth should have, we don't have them. I'm a youth copper and we swore an oath to be, to serve Nigeria under the sun and under the rain. I think the government don't care about the youth anymore, okay? It's just, it's just all about the money stuff, okay? I will not wait for the government alone. But if it comes from the government, okay. But for myself, I will try my best. So you don't have to cheat for government to do everything. And every time we wake up, like Nigeria, we don't do that. Like Americans, they wake up, they say, God bless America, but we don't do that. You blame government for everything. It's not like that. You check yourself out, too. I think we are giving the opportunity, like if the government give us certain opportunity we can give back in so many ways you know it is actually believed that the nigerian graduate is unemployable i think all you to try and get a handwork for themselves you can be a bartender you can be a waiter you can be a piero you can be a supervisor you can be any you can even drive keke bus you can just make use of yourself instead of you stealing there is a usual say that um we are the future of tomorrow and I don't think, without us, I don't think anything can still function here. In Nigeria, I doubt it. It is very important for us to understand that the youths constitute a major group in the society at large. Hence, the serious need to pull them in when making certain decisions. Till next time, it's still the UNI Street Talk, and I am Nelly Mesaik. Welcome back. So, Dr. Ibilola, um, what are the objectives of the Vision 2020? Uh, 2020 Youth Empowerment and Restorative Initiative. Well, we started the Vision 2020 Youth Empowerment and Restoration Initiative in 2006 because we believe we, re we actually need 15 years to transform the minds of Nigerians. And basically, it's a career counseling, industry awareness, and youth empowerment initiative, which is basically to expose young minds to become more patriotic and to deploy science, technology, engineering, and maths to ensure that Nigeria becomes a top 20 economy by the year 2020. You speak so passionately. I'm very passionate about young people. <laughs> so what's the drive? What the, drives you? Well, the drive is, first and foremost, um, I'm a career professional and an entrepreneur who runs a business in the UK and in Nigeria. And as a member of the Governing Council of the Energy Institute in the UK, I see um, young people from all over the world push themselves in science, technology, engineering, and maths to harness their natural resources. Have you been mentoring? I have been mentoring a lot of women and a lot of young people, especially mm. with WIMBIS, We Wimbis. Connect, and okay. with other things. Okay. And it, it, it hurts me to see that my own people in Nigeria are not rising up to manage their own resources the way it ought to be and maximize the use of our natural resources. So that's why I'm so passionate about getting young people involved in So how many, things. so with, for your business now, yes. um, what's the next level? I mean, yeah, what's the next one before I go into the next question? Well, we currently run our business in Lagos, London, and we're trying to expand into East Africa and the United Arab Emirates. 
And um, so in the area of consulting, engineering, information technology solutions, as well as expert manpower supply, that's our focus. So we're working on that at the moment. But right now we're very focused on the issue that energy and power is a major issue in Nigeria. And by utilizing gas, we can actually solve that problem. So the focus now is to develop the critical mass of workforce of Nigerians who can transfer their knowledge from the oil and gas industry into harnessing gas so to create how power. So your company, no, no branch in the Niger Delta? Well, I must tell you, the Niger Delta is very tricky, um, oh. very okay. tricky. We, the, the Vision 2020 initiative we run, we run uh, events, we've run events in the past 10 years in Lagos, we've run events in the past 10 years in Abuja, but the Niger Delta takes a lot of grassroots um, politicking hmm. to actually establish yeah, anything uh, substantial in tried? the Niger Delta. Oh, we tried, we were there in 2006, but um, I think it takes a lot to convince the people of the Niger Delta that you're genuine and they're very suspicious of the intent of uh, people who go to the Niger Delta. Wow, wonderful. So your husband is in support of, because this is a male dominated industry, yes. and your husband is very supportive of you. My husband is a very traditional, but very confident <laughs> gentleman who believes his wife is on a mission and he supports his wife's mission. So I'm very grateful to Mr. <laughs> Your children, how many? I have three lovely children uh, in the 20s and teenage. You're what? And, yes. In the 20s? Yes. Am I, well, <laughs> I, uh, Are you serious? Well, yes, my daughter will be 21 ne this month, Fantastic. in a few weeks, and um, I have t older teenagers. So how long have you grown this business of yours? Um, long 16 day, years, you said. Is it 25 years. 25 years? Yes, 25 years. We've had the business for 25 years. Interesting. Yes. Well, more on Dr. Ibirola after this break. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, Dr. Ibilola, do you um, think young people should work in family-owned companies? Also, um, why are family businesses abroad more successful than the indigenous ones? Well, I don't think family businesses are the right places to develop the um, expertise of young people. I think um, parents should allow their young ones go out and learn the ropes outside the family business. Not only will that make them earn the respect, the experience and the expertise outside the company, it also enables them inject new ideas and superior um, practices from other businesses back into the family businesses when they are in a position to earn the rightful position in the family business. So bringing them in by uh, veto is probably not the best way to empower them. I think they should be empowered outside the business before they, they come in at the right level. That way they're more experienced and to more know. Ex more, yeah. more exposed. Yeah, and then I'm abroad, right. uh, the practice really is to get them exposed to the business early um, and then send them out to gain external experience and exposure before they come back. And the, the companies abroad really have uh, succession planning and succession planning is based on human resources, policies, procedures, and practices. So HR takes charge of who is fit to run the business and who is fit to take over the business. Whereas in this climate, in this environment, people would probably place family members in businesses based on sentiments, sentiments. not necessarily on a proper HR procedure. Wow, wonderful. I'm very passionate about young people. Not only do I mentor and coach my own children, I also teach uh, teen church at the Anglican Church, and I also take on young 
female graduates as well as female entrepreneurs to be under the WIMBY's mentoring program. And also in Lonadec, we do have the Youth Empowerment and Restoration Initiative where we encourage young students to come and spend a minimum of four weeks with us in the summer holiday. Hmm. And we try and expose them to various departments. We try and teach them a lot of soft skills and ensure they imbibe professional ethics. And this has been something that we have decided as an organization that to give back to society, every single member of staff of Lonadec will take on young professionals as well as youths in society and groom them for the future. I think um, encouraging girls to become interested in science and technology starts with the mother or the father. I am a very, very lucky young lady because um, my late father identified the fact that I loved maths and physics and encouraged me. Um, and he did continuously tell me that what a man can do, a woman can do even better. So it has to start from a girl being affirmed at home. The second place where a girl needs to be affirmed is in school. Well, that's where you need career counselors and science and technology teachers to identify female talent and encourage them to pursue their desires. You need an encouraging teacher, a role model or a coach in school who would encourage you to pursue your dream in science, technology, engineering and maths. And then you also need to be a fearless an unintimidatable young lady because the boys will try and crowd you out at some point. But I mean, you've got to just stick your ground and give it your best shot. So it, it, it's multi-leveled, but I think your parents would really determine how you go about uh, pursuing your career in STEM. Well, because I'm very passionate about what I do, I could go hours forgetting, working and forgetting that I haven't eaten. and. Um, I'm, I'm a very restless person, and I would only eat things I really, really love to eat. So even if I'm hungry, until I find the specific thing I want to eat, I just wouldn't waste my time eating what is not what I want to eat. Okay, but I think this is nature. It has nothing to do with you starving yourself because you forget, well, you forget to eat. This is nature. I, don't, I, I, actually, I, I think I, it's nature, honest, I, from I, your... You know, your chiseled face to your very well uh, proportioned body to your legs. I must tell you, during the holidays, when I'm just eating and sleeping, I do put on weight. But <laughs> one, two weeks back in Nigeria, it all goes away. Oh. So it's, I think it's, it's to do with my restless nature, running around and doing a I lot of things. I start being restless now, because, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I would be like you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming to the show. Where this is very good for the audience. We've taken home one or two lessons. And I wish you good luck in your growing business. And I wish I need to have you back here as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Ibilala. Now we'll be signing off. But same time next week, do tune in. Remember, we are in this together. Bye for now. Hand. Don't be afraid, I promise I'll stand by you all the way. Here is my shoulder, if you need a friend, I'll be your anchor on whom you can depend. So come on.